in Jennifer Facebook in Hospitable World, she wrote that the Anthropocene means that the subjects, the home, and the planet at the heart of hospitality are already past. In simple terms, it refers to the geological epoch where human activities have dominated and greatly impacted the Earth. And the idea of hospitality infers a host-guest relationship, and it also outlines the relationship between individual subjects and modern nations, between humanity and the planet. This is a stray gorge dam in China, also known as Sanxia. As the world's largest hydroelectric power facility, the massive project later became notorious due to the criticism it faced. The dam holds records for the number of people relocated. Number of cities and towns flooded, and is surrounded by controversy, including governmental corruption, resettlement difficulties, and of course, ecological impacts. It was designed to address energy problems and relieve global warming, as well as to better prepare the nation for the global competition. But the dam turned out to do more harm than good. In the chapter of Still Life, Jennifer Fee argues that quote. Just film envisions a kind of minimal hospitality that emerges when the road of now submerged cities and towns is passed. End quote. She perceives that glamorous hospitality underlying the small gestures of welcome and kindness in film, as we see moments like this. For me, it is definitely true that the static long shot of them facing the wreckage of the town sends a note of tenderness and lingering hospitality. And those cherubic objects provoke a sense of nostalgia, that sort of makes us forget about what was happening there for one moment. Nevertheless, impoverishment, injustice, and other social issues like human trafficking are carefully contextualized in the off-screen background. I think John may intentionally choose to represent those haunting moments of the hospitable past instead of risking himself for criticizing the national project. But we need to keep in mind that it is dangerous to aestheticize or distantly romanticize those picturesque scenes of those unemotional characters. So to supplement what's left behind in still life, I want to introduce this documentary made in the same period, Up the Yanti. Up the Yanti is directed by the Chinese Canadian filmmaker Yun Chang, whose self-narration in the film was inspired by the stories told by his grandfather. It follows the lives of two teenagers, one from a middle class and one from the riverside shanty. They work on a luxury cruise ship catering for Western tourists who came a long way to see the landscape before or being flooded by the rising waters. Interestingly, as a documentary, Up the Yanti is way more character-driven and emotionally captivating, as it delves into the painful realities of relocation and displacement behind the still life portrayed in Just Sanja Good People. The use of close-ups. Handheld camera and first-person narration create a stark contrast with the non-intrusive and horizontally panning camera used in still life. Taking on a travelogue-like quality, the film is woven with elegiac sentiments as the screen alternates between empty shots of the river and glimpses into the characters' domestic spaces and workplace. Unlike the detached perspective of Sanming and Shenhong, who are just spectators of the disappearing town. Chen brings the images of poverty, discontent, and precarity that those villagers experience to the front frame. In Zelinska's book, the idea of precarity was understood as life without promise of stability, and then extended to describe the condition of our time. This shared condition of indeterminacy calls for ethical responsibility towards other people and non-human species. Because the interconnectedness and entanglements with others is prior to the human sense of self, as Shimizu suggests, that the flip side of achieving the progress is the sacrifice of China's agrarian heritage and ecosystem, as well as the disproportionate share of resources for its country. Why does this matter to us? As film scholars live in the privileged Western countries. When we contribute to the grand narratives on how the end of the road is approaching in the era of Anthropocene, we can't really reverse anything done in the past or terminate anything that's doomed to happen in the future for sure. Yet, at least, we can proactively remind ourselves of the widening global inequality, which is also closely linked to climate change. 
argued by Chinese scholars in 2022. Also, we need to be aware of the underrepresentation of developing countries in the discourse of the environmental crisis. Humans cannot be equalized with each other even until the end of our civilization, after all. But before the end of all worlds, it is the people living in precarious and vulnerable conditions who suffer the most. And thanks for having cinema. It helps us remember.